Greetings! My name is the Smaltzy Cynic, and today we're going to be starting our playthrough of Shadowrun Returns. Now, this comes from a long ass time ago, back when I had a shittier microphone and a poor sense of uh, video direction and other sorts of things, and not exactly a whole lot of technical knowledge on uh, how to actually record videos. So, <laughs> this is going to be kind of a. Um, how shall we say, a uh, a good second attempt at recording footage for Shadowrun Returns and the other Shadowrun games that I'll eventually get to. Um, let's see, what else was I going to start out with? You know, I had something planned, but I can't remember what it is. Anyway, um, so my original idea a long ass time ago was to kind of record footage for all three and make a video review on each. And given the fact that this game is basically viewed as a trilogy now and that you can actually play certain modules inside of other games and we'll come back to this when we visit the uh, the unofficial remake of this game in the Hong Kong per, uh, ex Enhanced Edition but I kind of figured if I was going to ever come back to Shadowrun Re the Shadowrun series I would want to at least do it as a trilogy of all the parts, all the stuff together, since the mechanics don't really deviate all that much, so it'd be basically it would basically be focusing on the story or the improvements over the time. So that's what I got kind of planned in the future whenever I upload all these things. But uh, anyways, I'm just rambling now. Another thing that I'm kind of happy I kind of let fester for a while in the <laughs> the uh, not the dark web, but you know the uh, the confines of the internet is that, oh boy, we're going to have lots of Shadowrun in the future. <laughs> now, not all of these things are complete stories, and, you know, I will give it props. I think Shadowrun might, might have the most story-focused modding community I've ever seen, which is sad because a lot of them are unfinished. But the few that are still active probably make some decent, you know, little fun uh, side stories. And... This is just a universe right for this, and if you don't know Shadowrun, it's kind of like a D&D mashup with Cyberpunk. So, you know, it's a interesting thing. You could you could kind of ex experiment with uh, more modern elements with classical traditions and stuff. So there's a lot of room for like storytelling purposes. But anyways, we're gonna actually start the official campaign. Now the reason I'm doing it here and not the other one is that. Uh, I'm not quite sure if it's the custom campaign or not, so we're just going to choose the default one. That way you get the most authentic experience. This one basically just lets you reuse your characters and break the game if you even further. If you want to even break the game even further. But we're just going to run the same, uh, the original one. And I would say at least if you're going to play this trilogy, play this game at least on hard because the first one is a lot easier compared to the other ones. But for my sake, I'm going to play hard across all three games. Or at least I'll try to. I do remember the second one being kind of a pain in the ass. Now, as far as classes, I'm going to try to vary it up with each one. And although I always go for the, the, te the, the technical... Yeah, let me try it again. I always go for the cybernetic stuff because, like, come on. It's... Shadow run. <laughs> but maybe I might experiment with the mages and stuff. Well, I'll have mage characters, but I meant like maybe more ma ma magi focused builds or something in the future. But, anyways, let's go with my favorite kind of one for this one the rigor. Um, so, as you can see, you can choose all these stuff. They uh, kind of match it to the portrait as best they can. So, we're going to find one that kind of you know, suits me, you know best is you know it's a limitation thing but you know I'm sure we could find something worthwhile oh here's something that looks handsome okay let's go with this okay so gist of karma is that it's basically your attributes now the way it works is you have each of these uh, kind of like I don't say like proficiencies and if you want to be like more charismatic you need this to like uh, unlock these ones down here and you can see this thin blue line it unlocks how much you can spend into each of these categories now because I'm not a what do you call it a uh, 
What's the word now? I can't forget it. Not a shaman or something. I can't really make the most of it, so I'm going to save on this right now. But eventually, I would like to get at least to level 6, because then I'll have at least 3 etiquettes to choose from. But since we're starting it off, I need to get my range combat in, in to get into check. So let's put 1 to dodge. And for this character, since I'm a rigger, let's go with SMG. Okay. I have four karma points left. Um, how about we put that into our drone control? Yeah. So this will at least make our drones a little more uh, useful. And then eventually we can equip even more drones. So, you know, kind of future proofing myself here. But anyways, that's all the gist of the uh, what do you call it? The character creation system. Besides the one thing we're going to add, which are, which is our etiquette. Now, etiquette is more so kind of like a... Not a skill option, but more like a uh, dialogue option that you can choose. So, depending on the, the race you have, you are limited to certain etiquettes. Or, sorry, a certain amount of etiquettes. So, humans are kind of the most versatile, but other ones, maybe like elves, have the most etiquettes. But... You won't need all of them, but if you have a decent amount, you can pretty much talk your way out of situations and the like. So, if this is me, I would say, let's say academic. Okay? Now here, this is actually like your name of your character. So, we're just going to go with my, uh, you know, runner name. There we go. Now, because this game lacks voice acting, I'm going to have to substitute it, which is why I decided to do a, you know, commentary run. That way I can kind of have a little fun replaying the first two games and kind of finish the third one that I never actually got around to, to beating. But I think that was mainly because I was kind of tired of it. But, you know, we'll take it in stride and take our time with it. Down and out. Your apartment. Three o'clock in the morning. It's got four walls, a roof, and it is on fire. Even the cockroaches have fled in search of a better accommodations. Not exactly a runner's dream fad, but right now, it's all you it's about all you have left. Running the shadows is about the least or famine. Oh, sir. <laughs> I screw that up. How did I mess up an L with an F? Whatever, try that again. Running the shadows is all about feast or famine. One day, you're a Nova Hot. Working jobs allow you to eat at five-star restaurants. The next, well, you're here. That's one famine for the ages. Sorry, this one's a famine for the ages. Slagging fixer hasn't called. Money's run out, and then some. Sinless and free, free to starve in the cracks of society run by megacorps who just want your new yen. Something needs to change, and soon. Now, I touched on this before about kind of like the, uh, what do you call it? Um, the lore and the world of this game, but, uh, I really do commend this first game because a lot of people will kind of look at this like, oh, well this was just kind of like a prototype to the better game, which is uh, Shadowrun Dragonfall. And I look at more so like just really kind of establishing the lore and the, the setting for like the rest of the series. That's what it does effectively so well because besides the mission structure, I think this game nails everything else about it. And if you actually pick up the novella version that comes with the deluxe edition, that is a huge resource that you can just kind of absorb this world and all for its uh, fun stuff. But anyways, here's our little uh, robot or drone, whatever you want to call it. And yes, the, uh, the portrait that I added in, it does work in game too. So yay. <laughs> oh, you could say I have some elite skills, but uh, no, that's like, this is like basic hacking, <laughs> if you could even call this hacking. Anyways, we got stuff to read. You're your personal calendar. Nothing to do, just like my life. Okay, your notebook, da 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 da. Let's see, contacts. Carter, Detroit, fixer, no responses. Dowd, runner, dead. Belton Nash, missing since February. New Larry, runner, dead. Sam Watts, runner, Probably in a gutter somewhere. Sanjanoma, runner, dead. Half Jack, dealer, retired or dead. 
I'm sensing a theme here, or a pattern. List goes on, all other dead ends are just plain dead. Now I actually did test out the uh, the first combat situation in this game compared to the mod that I will later play for the uh, Hong Kong edition of this campaign because you can actually replay the modules inside the other games. Um, I would say that if you want the most authentic experience of this, play the original because the soundtrack is different. I'm sure there's maybe a modder who can, you know, put the, tr the soundtracks back into the right order and such. But other than that, the combat is a little bit better in the Hong Kong version because it has more flank abilities and such. So that's why I kind of suggest you want to play this on hard at the very minimum. But anyways, let's uh, answer our call. I believe the year is, yeah, 2451. All right. Actually, is it 2051? Da, 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 da. I don't think it has a date anywhere. Oh well, let's just save our progress right now. And yes, I did actually uh, test this out, so I know it's actually working. The screen leaps to life, making you squint against its brightness. The face on screen is laughing. Sam Watts. Hey buddy, hope I didn't catch you at a bad time. He giggles. He's drunk again. Or worse. Where have you been, Sam? I haven't heard you for months. Oh god, I just realized. Why are all these characters named after my damn cat? <laughs> Another giggle. Oh, don't bother with your side of the conversation. I'm really not here. Just one reason for this vid. Somebody, someone finally geeked me. I'm dead. I probably had it coming. Now, if you're not familiar with Shadowrun, there's a lot of in-game lore, like New Yen as for the currency. Jacked is in the Decker stuff where you go into the computers. And Geeked is kind of like... When you had an unsavory character like myself, you tend to associate with other unsavory characters who often partake in unsavory business. Like you, for example. So why am I dead? Who knows? Probably my fault. I wonder where you are right now. I bet you hit a big payday and you're living high on the hog somewhere. Uh-huh. Some of us are born winners, and some of us are me. Hey, you remember that Ren Raku run? With, bleh, try that again. You remember that Ren Raku run when things went to hell and we lost Dowd, or that makeshift saloon on the docks afterwards? I really had your back that night, didn't I? Dowd, that's a name you haven't heard in a long time. Three years ago, a makeshift bar on the Seattle docks. The night Dowd went down. Zagoma is an urban shaman who proved her worth during a run against Fuchi last fall. She's the quiet type, an experienced runner. We're out in the open here, Smaltzy. Let's see. Late for another appointment? Sarcasm doesn't suit you. Let's wait another five. Well, I tried. Okay, what about you, sir? New Larry. You've been running with New Larry for about six months now. He's a combat mage with a bad tattoo and a bad attitude. Oh my. He knew Dowd almost as well as you did. Dowd. Never saw any the Never saw anybody die like that before. Idiot. I hate this freaking city, Smaltzy. It's wet, and the rain feels like acid, and I want out of here. I get it. Now take a pill and relax. Sure, sure, whatever you say. I don't know. Sam's a good guy, and can hold his own in a fight. But he's been hitting the bottle pretty good lately. Never on a run, so far. But he needs watching. That run went sideways nine ways to Sunday. Now the fixer is late. Smell funny to you? Hell yeah, it smells funny. Look at where he set up the meeting. This was supposed to be a public place. Cut the dreck, Sam. We both know why Dowd went down, and it wasn't the Fixer or some other paranoid chip dream of yours. Sam smiles a toothy smile. I've been waiting for this all night. New Larry has something he wants to say, don't you, Larry? Go ahead, spill it. You were sloppy. Sloppy? You think I was sloppy? You've been twitching all day, son. Look at your hands. They're shaking. 
Own up, Sam. If you screwed up, admit it. <laughs> Just like the cat. I'll admit if there was something to admit. I was on point. New Larry was supposed to cover doubt. Something dawns on him. He leans into New Larry, amused and dangerous. We were set up, and he knows it. Don't you, Larry? What was that call you made before we hit Renraku? How come you couldn't geek that guy before he unloaded on doubt? I've seen you flung a... Bleh. I've seen you fling a... Fl Ugh, why is it so hard to say? I've seen you fling a lightning bolt, son. He should have been burnt toast before his gun cleared the holster. New Larry checks his watch, licks his lips, looks over your shoulder at the darkness. He's looking for someone, and it's not the fixer. Okay, I can see where this is going. You chummers are all damaged. I'm out. Hands where I can see them, asshole. He stops and a smiley s across his face. What? You gonna take my gun away, Smalty? You know I don't need one. We got incoming. Looks like my new Renner crew friends are finally here. They're gonna take that hard drive off your corpse, buddy. We should choose our friends more carefully, you know? How about I buy you a drink after this? You owe me several. So this is kind of like XCOM and then it has a little bit of uh, you know, fun little intricacies of its own. So as a rigger, I have the option to uh, use my drone or not, but for the sake of this purpose, I'm going to actually use it. Now when I use it, one of my action points is taken away, but my robot gets, to, or my drone gets two, <laughs> two action points of his own. So uh, let's use him to kind of pepper this guy here. Or not. Okay. Oh, and this UI is very, uh, let's say, mobile-esque, which it's not a coincidence. It's probably what they intended. But it's actually not that bad, especially when you scale it up. Okay. And yes, I know I could be taking cover, but uh, clearing him out is kind of my main priority right now. Well, that all works. Now the nice thing is that you actually can choose any uh, character you want, but just don't hit the end button because then all these people will stop. So uh, be careful on that. Okay, didn't work out as I hoped. So let's get put myself into cover. You didn't kill him? Let's see. Heals all friends. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. You know, for a simple tutorial mission that's kind of like more of a flashback, it does at least get you a good idea of how the, uh, combat system works and uh, whether or not you want to stick with your uh, choice for for uh, what do you call it oops I meant to shoot this one really you missed a 94 shot figures wow everyone's missing <laughs> this did not work like before in my uh, first test See if you can finish them off. All right, good. But as I was saying, this is a nice test to see if you like your class and experiment with the other ones if, to see if something is more to your style.
Oh yeah, if you've uh, played XCOM uh, Enemy Unknown, then you're familiar with this annoying pain in the ass. Oh, I moved up to this place where I can uh, defend myself. Oh, but I can't see the enemy now. How am I supposed to tell? Just uh, memorization, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, it is annoying, but what can you do? Now, just like the rigor, the um, shaman is kind of like the magical equivalent. The nice thing is if you take him out, the uh, drone is inoperable. Or sorry, not the drone, the shaman is inoperable. So, I think it also works for the rigor the same way, but uh, just something nice to keep in mind if you want to even the odds a little bit. Okay, let's uh, move her up. There we go. Fight done. San San jo uh, San Goma. Let's go with that. San Goma lowers her gun. I Sam. You okay? Sam's breathing is heavy and he looks shaken. That was a hell of a thing. You don't look so good, Sam. You were born for this gig. Me, not so much. Now, this is a trend that this game does, and it's kind of to a fault that no matter what choice you really choose, it doesn't really steer the course of the conversation or even change the plot that much. There are some rare instances towards the end where it will have some gameplay altering effects, but for the most part, they're like this. So just setting your expectations accordingly. I think I'm going to hang it up, find a nice brothel somewhere, stay drunk till I croak. Words to live by. What about you? Hmm. Me, I'd do this. It's the only life I know. Well, you're a dumbass, and I'll drink to you when you're dead. Ah, uh, who am I kidding? I'm not going to outlast you. Guess you can drink to me. You stare at Sam's face on your comm link. Shake off the memory. Focus. I had your back that night, didn't I? Now, I'm asking myself, who would I ca who would care if I die? Who would give a rat's ass? Better or worse, your name is at the top of the list. Maybe it's the only name on the list. So, I set up a dead man switch to you to send to this call. To send you this call. I got a hundred thousand new yen insurance policy, payable when you find who's who creased me, alive with a conviction or in a body bag with justification. Either works. Contact my law firm, Rogers, Menger and McCain when the job is done. They'll know what to do. He turns to his left. Chet? The camera swivels to show a well-dressed man sitting next to Sam. Pursuant to Mr. Watts' wishes, Rogers, Menger, and McCain has installed a secure dedicated phone line so you may contact us directly when the task is complete. We will then begin a verification process. Note that you can also be on the secure line on a secure line the 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 try it again. Note that you must be on a secure landline to access this number. We will not accept transmissions from Comlakes or other devices. The camera swivels back to Sam. Sam straightens up, talks seriously first time. Look, I've led a direct life and I probably let a direct corpse. I've hurt people, hurt myself. I don't know. Maybe I just want the last word. Maybe I just want someone to give a crap that I sucked air for a while. What do you say? I'd say my schedule's pretty clear right now. 
Well, I hope you said just yes. Well, I hope you just said yes. I got a locator chip slot in my head these days. If, when, my heart stops, it will activate. That's how you'll find me. See you on the slab. Rest in peace, Sam. See you in Seattle. Your plane hits the C SeaTech tarmac with a jolt. Welcome to Seattle. The chilly northwest rain obscures your vision as you step onto the tarmac. Before long, you're sitting in the cramped backseat of a cab, following the signal from Sam's locator chip into the heart of the Redmond Barrens. Organ grinders. A legal chop shop for body parts, whether from the living or the dead. If you're hurting bad enough for Nguyen, this is the place to sell a limb or an organ. It's also a good place to dispose of an inconvenient body while making a little cash on the side. This franchise is the closest thing the Barons has to a morgue. It seems like this is where Sans Watt's body has ended up. Yeah. It seems like... <clears throat> it seems this is where Sans Watt body has ended up. You open the door and are assaulted by the smell of death and bleach. Now I should have clarified this during the character creation part, but uh, I don't think any three games have the same character. Although, kind of like MacGyver, my own uh, justification for the second game. But uh, just keep that in mind. It's kind of like more like Dragon Age 1, where you're kind of all separate characters in the same shared universe. The smell of death and decomposition wash over you, only slightly masked by the minty fresh of industrial grade antiseptic. Now, this game I think was kind of before its time, really, because it came out in 2013 before the likes of uh, Pills of Eternity or other CRPG kind of classics. So, I give it a lot more, uh, let's say, not excuses, but more so like, I give it more leeway than I probably would if it came out in a modern time. Which is a shame, because I really do want more of it. Hovering over the recently departed is a small dwarf, whistling a tune. His broad grin says, I love my job, a little more than you would want or expect from someone in the chop shop trade. As you approach, he looks up with a lopsided grin. There's something kindly in his eyes, though it might be a stray reflection of chrome and surgical tools. Sorry, didn't expect any visitors at this hour. And some asshole at cor- <laughs> Sorry, didn't expect any visitors at this hour. And some asshole at corporate took my receptionist. What can I do for you, sir? Are you the coroner? I'm John Dresden, the organ grinder's branch manager here. So yeah, that makes me this franchise area coroner too. And you are? I represent a name Sam Watts, and I'm here to look into his murder. He frowns. Interesting. A dead man makes for a strange client. But what makes you think is he's here? Sam had a locator chip embedded in his skull. I followed it here. I see. Well, you're right. He is here. Not too many people know about the murder yet, though the press haven't caught wind of it yet. What with it being all the way out here in the Barrens. Sorry, I get a little sidetracked when there's like a redundancy with yet and yet. <laughs> That's just me. So who told you he was dead? Sam's digital ghost. When his heart stopped, I got a send record message asking him, bleh, asking me to bring his killer to justice. Guess he had a hunch. The dwarf raises his eyebrow, a smile wiping the suspicion from his face. A dead man switch, eh? Fascinating. I was working on him earlier. He's over here. Now as far as exploration, all three of these games kind of suffer the same problem of kind of locking you into one area and not really offering you much else to do. So. Uh, don't expect anything to the likes of Pillars of Eternity, at least, where you have some choice, but whatever. He's my second Emerald City Ripper victim. The third one was downtown. Ripper, huh? I guess the classics never go out of style. He sighs. Not my title. That's what the Seattle, the, that's what the Seattle press insists on calling the killer. All I know is that, like the original Jack, our Ripper knows how to handle a scaffold. But this one's even more twisted. 
he or she always removes an internal organ from the victim. And Watt's liver was cleanly cut out. What about the other lucky contestants? The first victim's heart was missing. The third had the spleen removed. Dresden, get out here. Nope. Big, uh, trollish police officer. Ooh, what's this? Now, just keeping an eye on this stuff all the time. You may see things that you can kind of take advantage of. Sam's body is half covered in sterile surgical sheet. His face and ashen white. For the first time without a smirk on it. Below the chest, there's a small pencil-thin incision covered in dried blood. Beyond that, the corpse is immaculate. It would seem that the killer knew exactly what they wanted and took it. Next to Sam are several plastic envelopes containing the evidence found on his body. You can examine evidence through the bag without spoiling it. Let's look at that note first. You can see only parts of the note, given off the torn off bits and bloodstain. Sam, I feel terrible that we, we have been long to say I'm sorry. See you there, love Jessica. Now let's look at the business card. Moving things around, you can make out that it's a car from a place called the Seamstresses Union. There's something handwritten on the back, but blood has made it illegible. Okay, how about the cred stick? It's a standard cheap, unsecured tread stick. No way of knowing what's on it without slotting it. Let's take it. Now let's look at the purple shirt. It's Sam's shirt. Several of the buttons are missing, and blood has thoroughly soaked it. The bag sloshes a bit in your hand. Ew. Okay, so we got some credits. Towering over the diminutive coroner is a homicide detective right out of central casting. If you ignore the tusks, pointed ears, and Neanderthal bar- Neanderthal bar- Even a Neanderthal can say it. There you go. <laughs> There's my chick trick for remembering it. And Neanderthal brow. You can smell his cheap aftershave from a mile away. So this new Ripper Vic, Watts, name's familiar. Didn't his mother kill herself a while back? The coroner frowns. So you insisted at the time. He shortles. Come on, she offed herself. I had it on very good authority. Now let's go, Dresden. Give me something to work with here. Ripper's case is my ticket to a lieutenant's badge. I've already posted everything I know. The killer stuns the target with a combination of drugs and magic. <laughs> the killer stuns the target with a combination of drugs and magic, then removes a single or internal organ while they're still alive. The perpetrator is most likely right-handed, with a slim hand that knows its way around a scalpel. Has a decent understanding of human and meta-human analogy too. So, I'm looking for a whacked out surgeon. Not necessarily. I don't know any surgeons who still use scalpels anymore. These days it's all done with computer controlled lasers. Could be someone from a mi military field surgeon to an antique mis medicine aficionado. You're no damn help, dwarf. The Lone Star detective finally notices you. You note his superhuman powers of observation. Who the hell are you? Are you the detective? I was hired by Sam to help you. The dreck you were. You get anywhere near my investigation and it will be you on the slab, human. He looks back at the dwarf. Dresden, get me more. I am putting someone in a cell or a box this week and claiming my promotion. Well, he seems nice. Nope, don't see anything else you can interact with. Dresden look amused. Do you always make friends that easy? I'm great at dinner parties too. He cocks his head to one side. Be straight with me. You really gonna work for the dead man? Let's see. Sam was there when I needed him. I'm gonna return the favor. Fascinating again. Detective McCluskey isn't interested in anything but Detective McCluskey. He'd convict his own mother if it meant another 10 new yen a week in his paycheck. 
Plus, he's on the take. You have honor after a fashion. I try to honor the dead in my work, so we have that in common. What can I help you? On the take? Who's paying to hold his, his leash? I don't know, but somewhat major pull has been looking out for McCluskey's career. And wallet. What was that thing he said about Sam's mom? The official report is that she committed suicide about a year ago. You sound like you disagree with the findings. My name's on the report, but my actual findings left some doubts. I can't say it wasn't suicide, but there were unusual bruises on her upper arms, and she didn't use her dominant hand to pull the trigger. I was told to drop it, so I dropped it. Who still uses scaffolds? Doctors still learn how to use them in their first year of medical school, as do coroners, but neither profession uses them much anymore. It's possible some of the slimier chop shops still use scaffolds, I suppose, but I wouldn't know where to look. What are the organs worth these days? A whole body can be worth a bunch of new yen, but individual ones? Not as much anymore. What with all the synth and cyber stuff on the market these days? Organ grinders only deals in the recently deceased. There's plenty of other chop shops that aren't as picky, though. They don't care where the bodies come from either. Have you heard of the Seamstress's Union? It's a nearby club in the Baron that attracts the lowlifes. You'd probably like it. Me, I'm not the going out type. Always too much to be done around here. Plus, the dead are just easier to get along with. Okay then. So, just one more thing. Where was Sam killed? Dresden looks up at you intently before speaking. You know, I might be able to do you one better. Why don't you poke around those body lockers in the back and see if you find anything useful. Okay, then, I'll go do that. I mean, at least it's being discreet. <laughs> okay, so at least got some equipment. Oh, I did get some uh, karma. Anything I can really use it on right now? Um... I could get my SMG up a little bit. Or I could save it. Let's just save it. Now, everything you find is an item and you can actually sell these things, so it is kind of advisable that you try not to use them. But for uh, run jobs, they kind of give you a lot because you kind of, it's kind of an interesting dynamic system where you kind of, uh, choose how difficult you want the run or the mission to go, but I'll talk about more of that when we actually get there, otherwise we'll be here all day. <laughs> right, so let's go into the, see what's here. The cold storage drawer is la labeled John Doe, but the internal thermostat is set to 21 degrees Celsius. Well, I wonder what could be inside. The cold storage drawer opens to reveal the fully clothed body of a man arms folded across his chest. In addition to sporting some of the brightest orange hair you've ever seen, the body seems to be in a very good condition. Whoa, easy there. In one quick move, he jumps down from the drawer and stands before you. For someone who just woke up in a morgue locker, he seems unfazed and pretty well put together. You spot a data jack drilled into his temples and some shamanistic tattoos peeking above his collar. An interesting combination. I was told John to, I, oh, a, I told John to wake me up at six in the morning. Is it six yet? It doesn't feel like six. Uh you were just sleeping in a freezer. A freezer for dead people. Don't tell me you haven't considered it. Cheaper than a coffin hotel, and the service is just as good. He chuckles. Well, so much for a good night's sleep. On the plus side, I noticed you haven't killed me. So that's good. If you aren't after me, then what's your story? I'm looking into the death of Sam Watts. The coroner seems to think you can help me out. Sam, eh? Glad somebody cares. We used to drink together every now and then over at the Union. Decent enough guy. Always in trouble over something or other, though. Jake yells towards the other side of the room. John, is this guy cool? 
Yeah, he's on a level. Working for Sam, believe it or not. Some sort of dead man switch. I thought you could help him out. Maybe even stop moping around the shop all day. Thanks for volunteering. He pauses. Might be sizing you up, but it's hard to tell behind those shades. Alright then. Name's Jake. And you? Nice to meet you. Well, it sounds like you're taking a dive into the deep end here. John's right. I might be able to help you. I was with Sam the other night, the night of his murder. Poor guy. He was hanging at the Seamstress's Union, trapped out and rowdy. Tripped out and rowdy. I've been laying low there for a few days after a bad run. Miss Kubota asked me to th throw him out. So I did. But out in the alley, some gangsters got the jump. Damn. I might need some so coffee after all. John, could you grab me, grab me a cup? Get your own damn cup. My hands are dirty anyway. Now what's wrong with this intestine? You hear a loud squelching sound as Dresden continues his loud work. Thanks, John. You're a real pal. <laughs> Thanks, John. You're a real pal. Anyway... There's a fat corp bounty on my head. Like I said, my last job didn't exactly go according to plan. Out in the alley, a few Halloweeners got the jump on us. Dang gangsters thought they could turn a quick profit off of my head. Jenks smiles, and you get the impression that he didn't work out so well for the gangsters. That, The impression that didn't work out so well for the gangsters. Now, if I remember correctly, this is actually the character who you play as in the SNES version of Shadowrun. So... Neat little homage there to kind of start things off. Sam stumbled off during the during the fight, though, and that's the last I saw him. Until he turned up here, dead on arrival. Reminds me of last day in this place. You've done this before? It's a long story. I end up in a morgue more often than the average guy. And as I mentioned, that's basically the story how it started. <laughs> yeah, Jake's rear is a real regular. Should have started a rewards card, Jake. A few more visits and you get a free night stay. I'll hold you to that, John. Anyway, they found Sam's body less than a block away from the Union. Missing liver and all. Tell you what. You look like you'd hand yourself in a fight. I could use some backup to settle the score with those Halloweeners out there. The leader's got the whole gang searching the barons for me. I need to get out of that out. I need to get rid of that asshole. In return, I'll take you to the place Sam was murdered. It's not safe to hit the streets alone at night, trust me. And maybe I'll throw in some deep And maybe I'll throw in some decent supplies while you're at it. What do you say? Hmm. I do like a bit of street justice every now and then. Alright, count me in. Great. I've been hiding out here ever since that run-in with those Halloweeners. Whiny bunch of gang gangers. But this stretch of the barons is their turfs. Yeah. Whiny bunch of gangers but this stretch of the barrens is their turf. Hell, I'm surprised you made it into this morgue in one piece without packing some heat. Very funny, Jake. You can sleep in the dumpster tomorrow. So, you need a weapon? Have an MSMG? SMG? Spray and pray? Fair enough. Take this. A little beat up, but it works. So, ready for an evening out on the town? Hold on, tell me a little bit about these gangers first. Well... This one has a nastier gang. They're symbols of flaming jack-o'-lanterns, but you wouldn't like their version of trick-or-treating very much. Around here, they're led by a troll named John Paul. He's got all the Halloweeners and the Barons looking for me. We'll take him out, and maybe I can breathe a bit easier. Okay, I'm ready. I'll follow your lead. The Halloweeners aren't looking for you, yet. Okay, so basically the same one we had before. Alright, not a bad start. Oops, I forgot you gotta save it there. Duh. Okay. Let's keep this going for maybe another half hour or so, and then we'll call it a break for the first episode. I don't think I'm missing anything. Yeah, we're good. So let's just go ahead and leave it, and you know, do a little bit of combat sequences to kind of start this game off right. The Redmond Barons. Run in the Seattle Sprawl and sooner or later you'll find yourself in the Redmond Barons. It doesn't matter your business. The Barons doesn't like you. Oh, the Barons doesn't like you. Take one part radioactive wasteland, three parts doggy darks, 
dog eat dog slum, and a dash of tourist trap, and you get a recipe for mean as hell. You leave the sanitized death and formaldehyde of organ grinders behind, entering the anarchy and desperation of the streets. Jake stops a moment to breathe deeply, filling his lung with the motorcycle exhaust, radioactive dust, cordite, and who knows what else. He exhales an expression of wry contentment. The stench and grime tell him he's home. Okay. Let's quickly find your stash before things get, you know, messy. Oh, what's this? As you approach, the man sizes you up. You can see the age-old flight-or-flight equation running behind his drug-clouded eyes. Beneath the track marks on his arms, you spot a set of tattoos that indicate he is, or at least was, a shaman. What's your story? Nothing. No story. Nothing. Just leave me alone. I didn't see anything, I swear. Calm down. What's your name? Okay. Are you a shaman? Right to court, he seems to shake off some mental cobwebs. Yes, I am. What'd you see? See, I saw something. That other night I saw a spirit so dark, so alien that... Where did you see it? Just across the street from the Union. It's gone now. It's not going to kill you. You're safe. I think you're right. I feel better now. More whole. Now I think I need some sleep. Hmm. Wonder what that alien thing could be. Oh, there's a there's the supplies he was looking for. Oh, now we're in fight. Perfect. Hey, we got a rigor just for ourselves. Oops. Oops. Well, that wasn't how I wanted to start things off. <laughs> Alright, I gotta turn my machine on. Forgot that. Put him a little bit closer. Now the way the health system works here is a little interesting. Basically, it will only auto-recover the last damage that you take. So, if you take, say, like 13 damage, but you took a 10... Uh, you took 10 damage first, and then you took 3 damage next, you'd only recover that 3 damage, which is why I had that plus 3 at the end. But if you have a med kit, it just basically gives you a free heal. Sorry, not a free heal, but like it heals you for that a certain amount. So, there is a bit of a risk and reward in waiting to... Uh, heal your wounds or not, but I just figured I'd explain that since that's kind of an important mechanic for later on. So, welcome to the Barrens. Guess I'll need to find a new spot to hide my gear. Same drag in every city these days. True, I've been around, but Seattle's still a runner's paradise as far as I'm concerned. Now that you got some gear, let's go deal with those Halloweeners. They sound like a bunch of weenies to me. The man before you appeals well-mannered, but nervous. Excuse me, I don't know you, but you look like you can hand yourself in a fight, and we need some help. How can I help? Thank you. Some thugs are shaking down that market we set up. It's been getting worse lately. I don't think we can afford to pay them forever. But no one will stand up to them, and Lone Star isn't about to get involved. Where is this market of yours? It's just down the street, sir. Please, our livelihoods depend on this market. I smell a trap. 
Her clothes may be dirty, but this woman is far from downtrodden. Hey, not that it's my business, but I wouldn't go that way. Why? Just some Halloweeners stirring up trouble again. They rode in this morning on those fancy bikes, set up camp in the ro old street market. They've been marching up and down the street all day, shaking down anyone that wanders past. Typical. The odds are, those are the guys we're after. Sound like a friendly bunch. Are you going to be safe out here? You think I'm dumb enough to get caught in the streets by one of those assholes? Nah. I know these streets like the back of my hand. Worry about your own skin. Anything else to know? Hmm. Well, the leader's a big old troll named John Paul. Real piece of work. Yep, that's him. Well, thanks for the heads up. Null sweat. Let's see. I don't see him. Oh, this must be the market he told me about. Okay. The thug attempts to use his bulk and hideous breath to intimidate the shopkeeper. The old woman is holding fast firm, but you can see the thug's patience is fading fast, and he looks like he's about to start breaking things. Eh? Who the hell are you? Bet your mom's real proud of you. Like it ain't never heard that before. I don't see a badge, so why don't you moan your own business? Because I'm sitter gutter punks like you. I knew you were just looking to cause static. Dash, ask this guy. Uh, oops. Well, this is starting off on a great start. <laughs> Uh... Oh, that worked. Let's get him behind cover. Quite a bit of damage already, but uh, not really I can really do about that at this point. Alright, so Mrs. James. I can't thank you enough. I hate to see such bloodshed, but those men would not take no for an answer. We simply want to make our own way in the world. Please, it's the least I can do. Well, thank you. Yeah, I know I could have been nice and left it, but uh, could have done that. Commerce is like a weed, taking root in the cracks and crevices of the world whenever it can. The small street market has flourished here amidst the crumbling building of the Red Monsters. Now, I bet I could have got more karma if I'd said no, but, uh, eh, I'm okay with it. Yeah, let's go ahead and just upgrade our rig. That way I can use as many drones as I need. Because eventually I need to get... Yeah, I need to get this to get two drones. Okay. Alright, so I guess now we go into the actual fight. Hey, ass whites, tech, take another step forward and we are going to paint plant you right there. This is Halloweener property now. This is one of the two ways I got away. One of the two that got away. 
If I had missed that I shot, these idiots would have given up and moved on by now. Wait a minute. You're rolling with Jake? Bad idea, chummer. They're... We're collecting about... Ugh. We are collecting on that bounty. And killing you? Well, that's a nice bonus. I always hate when that happens. Unfortunately, it's not like, uh, what's it called? Oops. It's not like, uh, Divinity where you can just hit the portraits and then just, you know, magically does it for you. But oh well, we're fine. Now... Should probably move him out of the way. Whoa, uncle, uncle. I was just playing with you. I'll call it off the rest of the Hellmeters, Jake. I'll call it even, yeah? What do you think, Jake? Hey, I'm already at shoot on sight status with these guys. Killing John Paul means one less wiener to shoot at me in the back while I'm buying smokes. Hell. They'll be doing the same to you as soon as they're profiting it. You're right. Let's finish this. <laughs> oh, Drek, all right. And that's why I like the robot. Save my progress so far, I don't have to lose that. Now, I don't think there's any loot, so that's one thing this game does kind of right, that you don't get extra loot unless it's like uh, tied to the environment, like something where you find an extra med pack somewhere or something like that. I prefer it. Keeps everything streamlined to a point where it's not boring. There's the Seamtress Union. Hey, Chummer. Got some tasty morsels for you. Just what every well-dressed Shadowrunner should have in his back pocket. What do you got? Let's see. All right, these things. Okay. Um... It's a temporary thing, so I'm going to not get it for right now, but maybe in the future. Dan the Donut Man. What you got, buddy? The smell of fried food, powdered sugar, and slightly burned SoCalf is almost too enough to overpower the dusty sewage stench of Redmond Streets. The troll working the stand is covered in food stains older than he is. What could I get you for it? You know what? I'll take a jelly donut. What can you tell me about the Barons? Hell, if you have to ask, you probably shouldn't be out there. This stretch is what we're called on the tourist fill, though, and I suppose it's the closest thing around here to respectable. Fewer muggings, and you might even survive the drinking the water if you're lucky. Wouldn't recommend it, though. Now behind me, that's the Seamstress's Union. You want drugs, drinks, favors, or information? Union's your spot. Hell, that place is the reason I'm in business. Folks get the munchies when they're at party. Mr. Kabuta owns a joint, and she's a quality, a hard woman, but fair. Did you see the murder in the alley across the way? Nope. I was closed when it happened, but hey, it's the Barons. A 
back alley killing nothing around here. Or a back alley killing is nothing new around here. The only reason the cops are making a big deal about this ripper business is that some of the victims are real people. You know, folks with sins. Now, sins are these kind of like, uh, I guess you can kind of think of it like social security. <clears throat> Let me try it again. So sins are kind of like social security status stuff. Um, but more so it's like a debt that's tied to your account or name. So, you know, it's kind of sad that they have to be in debt to have, you know, sin. Get 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 it? Sin bearing debts. Yeah, you get it. It's, it, it's clever. It's, it's a cute thing. Anyway, I'll see you around. All right, here's the murder site we're looking for. As you approach the scene of Sam's murder, Jake spies the flashing red and blue lights up ahead. Whoa, hold up a minute. Lone Star isn't above collecting on a corp issue bounty. And the one on my head isn't going away anytime soon. Sorry, friend. I think this is where our path diverge. Thanks again for the help with those Halloweeners. Here's your payment. They don't take New Yen where I'm going, and you look like you use the funds. Likewise, give me a call when you're in the clear. Yeah, sure. Hey, one more thing. When you're done checking out their pal's crime scene, pop in on the seamstress union. It's just down the street. You need gear, information, or just a damn stiff drink, that's a place to be. Best dive with this side of Chicago. I use I used that place as a base of operations for years, back in the day. Make the right friends there and I'm sure you'll get to the bottom of this ripper business. Well, it was nice knowing you. Jake turns and disappears into the shadowy depths of the Redmond Barrens. See, this is how you do fan service, but in a respectable manner that actually kind of keeps his character in check and also kind of gives you a subtle... Well, I mean, subtle is kind of just if you know it or not, but like a respectable homage that doesn't take away from the actual game. The bright yellow bl the The bright yellow police tape cuts through the darkness, directing your eyes to the white chalk outline and dark red stain marking the slab of pavement where Sam Watts died. Standing at the entrance of the alley is a Lone Star officer. The cop looks cold, hungry, and irritated at the homeless man who's currently pestering him. Now I know this is a, what do you call it? This is a video game and all, but uh, how long has Sam been dead? I mean, I guess it can't be that long and it can't, he couldn't have been that far away because if the body's, the body's blood is still there and the body was being examined, then he should have been somewhere in the city, my character I'm talking about. But you know, it just seems a bit convenient that the blood stain is still there, which is, I don't know, just something a little bit nagged on. I keep telling you, I need to get my stuff from the alley or I'm going to die in the cold tonight. And I've been trying to explain to you this is an official Lone Star investigation and I can't let anyone in here. Hey, I got rights. Look, you're sinless garbage. I've got work to do. Find a new blanket or I'll find a reason to use my stun baton. Now, those without sin are kind of like homeless people in uh basically people without jobs or anything. So being sinless in this world is actually bad. <laughs> Typical. I hate all you pigs. Hmm. No, I'll just bring it back if I try it again. The streets have not been kind to this man, but they've also hardened him. This man is clearly a survivor, the one wrestling with the onset of age and arthritis. You. I saw you over there with that rat bastard cop. What do you want? You know anything about the murder that took place here? You a copper or you working for some corp? Nope, I'm as sinless as you. Mind answering a few questions? Hey, what makes you think I'm sinless? Ha, huh, I'm just messing with you. Of course I'm sinless. System ID number my ass. What kind of questions you got? Sounds like you live in this alley. Sure, for the past couple of months, I've been sleeping there. But I spend my days doing odd jobs for the street merchants or panhandling tourists over to the scene riches union. Did you see the murder? Nope, and I can't say I'm sorry I missed it. I was hauling crates for Mrs. James up at the market. 
Can't carry as many as I used to, so it took a while. Got back here in time to see a couple of tourists puking all over my home turf. By then, that jerk face in the uniform had already set up, set up shop in my alley. What else did you see? Hmm. You know, early in the night I saw a big and ugly troll in green hospital scrubs snooping around the block. He bought some donuts and two cups of Sokoff off of Dan over there. Seemed nervous, and he did everything that was his left hand because his right was all screwed up with some cyberware. Can you tell me about the troll's cyberware? Well, it was big, and I think it must have had some hospital attachments because I saw some needles. It was a lot like the ones I saw back in 44, when I got captured by the elves. They did all sorts of experiments on me, let me tell you. Never trusted one of them cyber people. Good to know. Thanks. See you around. You again? What? The coroner addressed and sent me over. Doesn't mean jack to me. Unless someone raises me with an update, my order is that nobody gets in. I know it's a bit cliche, but let's try it. Long night, eh? You look cold, so I picked up a donut and some coffee for you. Hey, thanks. The officer's face lights up as he takes a sip. He seems pretty trusting for an officer of the law. You know, when my dad was a cop, this was back when cops actually worked for the government. He said folks would buy him coffee all the time, but I ain't see it till now. So what can I do for? What can I do for you? I'm actually working for the dead man to help find his killer. Can I come into the alley and look around for a bit? Your client is on the chalk line? That's messed up, man. But I respect it. Okay. But don't mess anything up. Not that anyone would likely notice because the forensics aren't coming back. So, I could have lied. It probably would have ended up something else. This looks like the coat and blanket the old man was trying to get back. I'll pick it up. As you pick up the bundle of cloth, a printed receipt falls out beneath the folds of the blanket. It's a bar receipt from the Steamers Union dated two days ago. Right around the coroner is reported time of death. The customer, Sam Watts. The server names listed is Co Coyote. How did I mess that up? The server's name is listed as Coyote. There are two distinct sets of footprints, a human's ending up the chalk outline, and a larger set, possibly the orc or troll, following just behind the first. The work light is new. You can see this all of the alley's normal lights have been ruined. Upon closer inspections, it seems that they've all been imploded, as if some force had shattered them at that same time. Amidst the shards of glass from the broken lights, you find a small piece of glass which looks like the bottom of a test tube. Okay. So that's our first clue that we need to go into the uh, Seamstress' Union. But first, before we do that, we need to give back this guy his blanket stuff. Hey there, youngin. I think these belong to you. My stuff. Mighty decent of you. Don't see that kind of thing too often out here. And now we go to the next area. I might end it here because it seems like a, just a fitting time, but uh, I think there's a couple things around here we can do first. I'm close. Come back tomorrow. You got a great view of that alley across the street. Don't suppose you saw that murder that happened there. Sure. I was closing up when I heard a series of explosions from behind. A couple seconds later, this guy comes out, run across the streets. Didn't get a look at him. Then all the lights in the alley exploded all of a sudden. Things got pretty quiet after that. And let me guess, you didn't go running over to see if he was okay. Hell no. Around here, that thing kind of gets you killed. Well, thank you for your time. Uh-huh, no problem. You know, this actually is a good place. Let's see, how long is it? Yeah, let's just call it here. So, next time we'll enter the Seamstress's Union, and we'll see how far this rabbit hole will go even further. So, thanks for watching, and catch you later.